Hello and welcome to theCUBE and this Red Hat Summit 2024 preview. We're, we're also going to be talking about Ansible Fest, OpenShift Commons, and really what you can expect as you get out to Denver in May. Today, we're going to explore some of the key themes that will drive content at Red Hat Summit in Denver on May 5th through the 9th. Red Hat Summit will once again also include Ansible Fest as an in-company summit, really co-located going across the whole week. The, the Cube will be there and we'll be unpacking all the announcements and bringing you insight from partners, customers, and of course, some of the key Red Hatters that are out there really working with this technology. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined by Ashesh Badani, SVP, Chief Product Officer for Red Hat. Welcome on board, Ashesh. Hey, Rob, thanks for having me on. Well, I, I, this is really excited. I'm so excited to be there again this year, uh, getting to interview so many great people. You always have such a great lineup that comes to the Cube, not to mention the keynotes are killer. Uh, I, I, I'm very excited, but I don't want people to you know, get there too late because again, there's some training on the 5th that starts on Sunday. There's OpenShift Commons, which again, you know, really the hallway conversations are key where people and partners get interact with those on the dev side, on the infrastructure side. It's really about the commons and coming together, which is fantastic. That'll be on Monday. And then things really kick into high gear with Ansible and Redshift or Red Hat Open <laughs> OpenShift and Red Hat Summit really taking off on Tuesday and for you know for the rest of the week. So I, I think it's really going to be an exciting time and I'm I'm just going to you know start in here because I think one of the things that we saw coming out of uh, KubeCon, Cloud Native Con a couple of weeks ago was the fact that people are really excited about AI. And I think one of the things and it kind of ties into what's going on at Red Hat is that you know bringing Ansible Fest and co-locating it with Summit really is key because a lot of people to get value out of AI, you really need to automate things and automate and really bring those playbooks so that you can do it in a repeatable manner. You understand how things you know tie together. What are some of the things that organizations should be looking for out of Ansible Fest as they attend? Yeah, so uh, thanks, Rob, for those kind words. We're excited too, right? So it's a, it's a great mix, I think, of both uh, community activity as well as uh, sessions that will be of interest to our commercial customers, government organizations, the world over. Um, Ansible Fest is indeed co-located with Red Hat Summit. We did that last year um, to great success. We're doing that same um, this year, um, welcoming community members as well as uh, our enterprise users from, from around the world. Uh, and you're absolutely spot on. Uh, automation plays a huge role for AI. In fact, we've seen automation actually play a key role just in bridging this sort of world of hybrid cloud, right? Between uh, installations that customers have in their own data center, in their own private cloud, and taking advantage of uh, what they've put up in, in the public cloud, uh, and using something like Ansible, uh, we've seen has been extremely popular. Um, and there's a huge amount of Ansible usage uh, uh, across our customer base. So being able to talk about that, being able to tie those together, talk about the opportunities for Ansible at the edge, specific use case for Ansible, whether it's networking or security, and then ultimately the tie to to AI, uh, I think it's going to be really powerful. So, so we're excited to to uh, showcase that. Yeah, I, I think you hit on it. The community, I think also, I, again, just the people sharing the different customers coming together, not only the ones that will be on stage, but it, it's great. And I think while we're on the AI topic, you know, I, I think it seems like there's a good number of sessions, by the way, the catalog's up. I went and perused through it uh, just yesterday, and there's a lot of really good topics in there, especially around things like OpenShift AI. What, what should organizations be thinking about as they attend Summit? Uh, around AI and things like OpenShift AI? Yeah, so lots of different ways to think about it, right? So uh, we announced OpenShift AI at, at Summit last year. You know, think of that as an opportunity for us to serve, you know, what what you know, analysts such as like yourselves and others are calling the MLOps market. 
um, the ability to be able to say customers are going to have a wide variety of you know models that they use, some that will be uh, open, uh, some perhaps proprietary or closed in nature, a uh, variety of different you know tools and languages and frameworks, being able to deploy them, run them, serve these models, uh, be able to fine tune them. Uh, in short, there's a life cycle around them, right? And so OpenShift AI really provides that that platform to be able to do that in a, in a consistent fashion. And of course, it's open source. It's built on the foundations of OpenShift and uh, our Red Enterprise Linux platform as well, right? So take all the products that you already know or are familiar with uh, and then use that uh, to be able to run uh, your AI model at scale, right? So that's the OpenShift AI uh, uh, you know, part of our portfolio we'll talk about. Um, but then we're also infusing AI into our portfolio, right? So last year's summit, we also talked about uh, Ansible Lightspeed, uh, the ability to be able to say, um, I can use uh, uh, English language, a natural language prompt uh, to ask a question with regard to uh, perhaps some task that you want to do. Um, and you type that in and out comes YAML that you can then go and paste into, uh, into a playbook. Up and be able to run that, right? And sort of bringing that as well to OpenShift and the rest of our portfolio uh, is something we'll talk about as well, right? So at the application of AI, being able to actually run these models, as well as some other areas that we're working on um, that we'd love to, to preview at the summit as well, right? So I'll hold that part back as some excitement uh, that you and, and the rest of the viewers can, can take advantage of uh, when you engage with us live at summit. Yeah, I can't wait. I, I think it's it's super exciting. I, I think, again, this is really at the nexus of what's going on with AI and that AI infrastructure and how it's really playing out. And I think you kind of brought up uh, the advancements with AI built into uh, Ansible last that were announced last year. I think there's also really uh, were some key security pieces to that and how AI was, you know, safe and uh, transparent, and I think that's another key that Red Hat has definitely been pushing on. Uh, but you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up security in general. There also seems to be a big theme of security, especially in secure software supply chains and trusted supply chain, uh, which is the Red Hat product set. Around that, uh, tell us what should people be really interested in from a security perspective as they come to Ansible Fest and Summit? Yeah, so security, compliance, governance, um, these are themes that are coming up, and Rob, you're, you're spot on in, in bringing up uh, the importance of that. Uh, we've heard of the recent uh, uh, challenges on, on the XC front uh, that uh, several folks are trying to deal with as well. Um, I think the Red Hat solution is one uh, that spans the different environments customers run in. Right? So on the one hand, uh, for example, we hear a lot about uh, uh, governance, compliance concerns, privacy issues uh, that are coming up. Uh, there's regulations, for example, uh, in Europe, the Digital Operational Residency Act, right, is you know getting a lot of customers to think about exactly where these applications are running, um, how they can make sure they're portable across environments. Um, there's sovereignty that's coming up in, in Europe, but also in some of our uh, customers in Asia Pacific. Uh, with regard to the actual data and and, and whether where that's uh, that's residing, uh, and so uh, those are important considerations. Uh, then there's the actual work customers do, right? With regard to uh, if they're using software packages, uh, you know, what's the uh, uh, source of them? Uh, what's the provenance around them? Have those packets been uh, signed appropriately? Uh, can we make sure that you know as these uh, uh, binaries are being used? Uh, that they aren't compromised in some way, right? There's no backdoor, you know, in them. Uh, how can we make sure we can do that in a way that, you know, we can audit that? Uh, how can we make sure that, you know, we can do that for folks who are actually uh, allowed to access it, right? So so this notion of sort of, you know, authentication, but then the, the folks who are authorized around it. Um, a lot of these areas are being covered by our portfolio, right? So software supply chain, like you referred to, uh, is something we'll talk about, and we'll talk about, you know, the, the, the parts of it uh, that are, are not generally available uh, for, for folks to use, but then also the investments in security that we have into our specific products, right? So whether it's Red Hat Linux and some of the capabilities within our insights part of the technology, uh, OpenShift with uh, inbuilt security as well as advanced cluster security that, as part of that, as well as the work we're doing on the OpenShift AI front. So uh, that's, again, some areas that, you know, we'd love to spend some more time talking about uh, at Red Hat Summit. And of course, there'll be a series of sessions that will go through uh, that in more detail. 
Yeah. No, I, I think that's really key. And I, I think a great place for people to wrap their hands around how cloud native applications and AI being part of a cloud native application as they integrate that in really can be secured and how you do it in a way so you can meet things like Dora, which is not the Explorer, but that the act, uh, the Digital uh, Resiliency Act over in Europe, and also the AI Act that just passed uh, just a month ago over in Europe as well. And, and I think one of the big themes coming out of Europe, out of uh, KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, was also developer productivity, uh, which was just a huge theme. And I, I think I would expect that Red Hat would have a, a place to have a discussion about that as well as you have Red Hat uh, Developer Hub and other pieces that go along with that. It, what are organizations going to get excited about or what should they stay tuned to uh, as they approach Summit around developer productivity and experience? So look, I just came off visiting with customers in Europe, met a large financial services uh, organization, very, very interested in developer hub and developer productivity, right? And they're dealing with some of the same things that we've seen uh, customers deal with uh, across the world, right? You know, you had, uh, you know, the COVID days, teams became more distributed uh, and they wanted a more standardized way to be able to ensure that customers or developers, uh, specifically within those customers, were having access to the appropriate tools you know, having golden paths and templates to be more productive uh, in, in the work they do. We see interest in that in financial services, but then also in, in government organizations, uh, as well as just any uh, organizations that are just large distributed teams uh, who are interested in that. We're taking advantage of uh, the work that's happening in the backstage uh, uh, project, right? That's the one that was kicked off by Spotify. Uh, that would be what's upstream um, to our uh, productized offering. And then, of course, we're doing a bunch of work to ensure that uh, we're helping uh, make it much more enterprise ready. So whether it's uh, uh, add-ons that are uh, uh, specific to some other Red Hat products that customers can use, whether it's uh, uh, support for things like RBAC, role-based access control, whether it's uh, the ability to uh, be much more uh, dynamic with regard to uh, how you can use the, the, the different components within it without necessarily having to rebuild your environment. Um, these are all the attributes that we're adding into into our our uh, offering around uh, Red Developer Hub. So, again, excited to talk about that in more detail. Actually, show demonstrations of that, uh, you know, through sessions uh, as well as on the show floor. Yeah, I I, I love that how you join in uh, your demonstrations with the keynotes as well, and I'm looking forward to that because again, that to me is always, as the geek uh, geek side of me always gets me excited to see it in action. Um, which was great because I, I got to talk to one of your customers over at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon. I talked to ABB, who was doing something really interesting with OpenShift uh, and MicroShift. They were really using it at the edge. Edge really play is going to play a role from an AI perspective because a lot of times data can't really, you can't bring all the data back. You have to do inference and other things at the edge. What, what should organizations be thinking about as they come to Summit around edge technologies and edge use cases? Yes, we release something called Red Hat Device Edge, right? And that's really a combination of uh, ensuring customers can have an optimized Red Hat Linux uh, environment, right, uh, for, for edge, uh, as well as an optimized OpenShift, right? So that's the MicroShift project you're referring to. And we, again, uh, ensure that uh, the constraints that exist in, on the edge, right? So whether it's it's compute, whether it's storage, uh, whether it's network uh, and being in a sort of a disconnected or intermittently connected environment uh, is important. Uh, we also ensure that Ansible can help support that uh, with regard to managing so many remote devices uh, in, in stages they are and help, uh, help them update uh, as, as, as needed. Um, the key part is that uh, all of these technologies that customers are using in their data center, you know, the optimized version of that, or the edge version of that, you know, also have the same core APIs, right? So you're consistent with regard to whether you use it in the data center or using uh, it out to the edge. But of course, uh, the form factor is appropriate for for the for the uh, requirements, the constraints that, that you have there. Um, ABB is a good example. They're doing some really interesting uh, work with us. 
uh, but we have other customers as well, right? We have, you know, use cases, for example, such as a customer choosing it on an oil rig out in the middle of the ocean um, or uh, customers that, you know, like ABB that are out uh, on the factory floor. Um, we are also working closely with some telcos or service providers um, who, again, have different requirements, right? And there you've got the notion of the near edge versus the far edge uh, and the 5G build out that's going on. So, so we'll also talk about you know, how they can be deployed, for example, in, in Delta-based environments. So uh, we're seeing interest uh, in uh, manufacturing for sure um, on the telco front, uh, as well as, you know, several government organizations as well, right, with regard to, you know, how they have distributed environments that they're helping support. Uh, so, yeah, so the edge areas is fundamentally interesting, exciting to us, taking advantage of our core technologies and making sure that we make them consistently available. Essentially, uh, Taking what Edge as an extension of our hybrid cloud, uh, we think is an interesting value proposition. For yeah, our users. totally agree. And I think that uh, cloud is really an operating model, not a place. And I, I think Edge and you know you're in all the, the hyperscalers as well as many of the different co-location facilities and people's on-prem uh, data centers. And I, I think that's all cloud at this point. It's just how you operate it, which is, I think, a lot of things that people can pick up as they come to Summit. But I think some of the most interesting stuff always comes out of the customers. I, I went through again and looked, and you have just a ton of customers coming up on the main stage, on some of the smaller stages, on the cube. Really, Red Hat always gets great organizations to come on across the board. You know, what should organizations coming to Summit really think about as they are picking their tracks and picking which other organizations they go and listen to? What are some of the, the things you, you know, because they got to make choices. So what are some of the things you would tell them and when they're trying to make the choices about what sessions to go and attend? Yeah, great, great question, Rob. So yes, so we are excited. We're always excited about uh, the customers that come and and talk about uh, the success story. So number one, I would highly encourage uh, customers to take advantage of uh, interacting with others, right? In some cases, you'll meet users who directly, you know, if you're in financial services, you'll meet someone, you know, financial services, right? Perhaps you're from New York, you might meet someone from, you know, Australia or London. Uh, you know, who are uh, facing maybe similar challenges, you can learn from each other, right? So there will be opportunities uh, for that, uh, you know, within sessions uh, and, you know, hearing from each other. There's always the hallway track. Uh, there will be opportunities for networking as well. Um, so being able to see and learn from that, you know, uh, you know, I think I think is a super important and critical part of, you know, what we do. So number one. Uh, number two, uh, being able to also customize based on, you know, where you are, right? So we have sessions appropriate for developers, sessions appropriate for whether you're a system administrator, uh, if you're a deep OpenShift user, if you want to learn more about AI, uh, if you want to have sessions with regard to how to deploy technologies out of the edge, you know, we've got focus sessions, you know, depending on your audience and, and your level of interest, right? So, you know, customize a path for yourself uh, for that. But while you do that, I guess my one big sort of, you know, ask will be, you know, open yourself up to some other new areas as well, right? So see what else you can learn, uh, you know, that you might be able to take back. Uh, one might just be of you know, interest to you, but, you know, two, you might have colleagues back, you know, uh, in, in your office or in your organization uh, who might want to learn more about that, right? You could tell them about, you know, what's going on on that front. And number three are partners, right? We have a wide ecosystem of partners, right? You know, Rob, you mentioned the hyperscalers, uh, right? But, but you know, there's hardware providers, right? Based on, for example, the AI uh, and the interest in the GPUs from a variety of different providers, um, there's ISV partners. There's also partners that are helping build solutions out. So engaging with them, seeing demonstrations of our technology, as well as, you know, things that they're doing to integrate, you know, with our portfolio, I think yeah, is going to be really important. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm excited for our users to be exposed to each other, be exposed to some of the technology goodness that, you know, we want to share, as well as, you know, give them a preview of the roadmap to come, and then also learn from our uh, larger ecosystem. Yeah, I, I think it's a, just a great week. Uh, it's very valuable time spent. Like you said, I think I, I like that, hey, attend something that maybe you didn't think was in your core uh, and bring that back. Think of the other people who maybe didn't get to attend or are attending virtually and go and see some other things that you can bring back to your company because I think that's 
hearing from these other organizations, hearing from the people who are out there, including the partners, is is so, so key. So, you know, again, Ashesh, thanks for coming on board today. I, I, this has been great. Uh, I'm real excited, uh, and I can tell you are. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, uh, thank you for the opportunity, Rob, and look forward to seeing you in person in uh, just sort of month. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's flying by. It's it, it's going to be be here before we know it. And I want to thank you all for tuning in to this preview of Red Hat Summit 2024 and Ansible Fest, co-located in Denver, which the Cube will be broadcasting live May 6th through the 8th. Stay tuned to the Cube, the leader in technology analysis and news.